Hi guys, who's ready for a flower talk? I'm at Nurse Strand Big Woods State Park today to talk a little bit about a special flower, the Minnesota Dwarf Trout Lily. Um, if you didn't know, Nurse Strand Big Woods is named after the Big Woods continuous forest system found in central Minnesota. Um, this was mostly found throughout this area before European settlement, but you can still find fragmented areas uh, like here at Nurse Strand. Um, there is a little waterfall called Hidden Falls here as well, but the true beauty of the park is this big woods forest. Well, let's go take a look at the Minnesota Dwarf Trout Lily. The Dwarf Trout Lily occurs on fewer than 600 acres of woodland habitat, with rich slopes dominated by maple and basswood, and adjoining floodplains dominated by elm and cottonwood. I'm a sucker for maps, so I just want to show you the um, show you where the big woods kind of falls in line with the state of Minnesota and our other biomes. So you can see right in the middle, um, kind of in that transition between our deciduous forest and prairie is where um, kind of the natural history of where the big woods was found. In the spring, wild flowers bloom in abundance. A remnant population of dwarf trout lily, an endangered plant endemic to this area, is present in the park. Like spring beauties and Dutchman's breeches, the trout lilies are spring ephemerals, meaning they're adapted to flower and grow before the deciduous trees develop their leaves. When summer shade darkens the forest floor, these plants have already bloomed, generated their food reserves for the coming year, and lost their leaves. Dwarf trout lily is a federally endangered forest wildflower found within only 270 square mile areas in Rice and Goodhue counties in Minnesota. Because it is known only from this small area, the dwarf trout lily is considered a Minnesota endemic, meaning a species that grows only in Minnesota and nowhere else on earth. There are three species of trout lily in Minnesota the Minnesota Dwarf Trout Lily, the White Trout Lily, and the Yellow Trout Lily. All are spring ephemerals and all have these tapering green leaves with a lightly modded with a grayish white pattern. Um, so the best way to help identify between them is wait for them to open flowers. So these ones are probably going to be a White Trout Lily, even though I can't see them open. Just from me looking at the size, um, they are a lot bigger than I've seen pictures of the Dwarf Trout Lily. And so even these ones look small, but I think they're just little babies and need to open up first before you can identify them. The Minnesota Dwarf Trout Lily is distinguished by other trout lilies by its underground vegetative runner, from which the species takes its name Propolanus, or sprouting forth. The blooming plant is readily identified by the very small size of its flower. Flowers of the Dwarf Trout Lily are about the same size of a dime or less, pale pink, with a variable number of perianth parts or petals. Uh, most members of the lily family have six petals, but dwarf trout lilies have uh, five, six, or even four. So just take a look at multiple while you're out. So I believe I did find one. Um, I guess I'm not sure until it opens, but you can see here, here is uh, probably a white trout lily. You can see it's a bigger individual and then look right next to it. Um, there's a smaller little flower stem uh, and I, I won't be able to know for sure until it opens up but just by the size I'm guessing that it's the dwarf trout lily but um, it's too cold today so I'll have to come back and see it later. The origin of the Minnesota dwarf trout lily is not fully known but genetic research suggests it evolved from the white trout lily shortly after the last glaciation period. Because it does not produce its seeds, it is likely the plant were spread by floodwaters, uprooting them from their original location somewhere on the Cannon River, torn loose from this original habitat, and then these plants would have been redeposited on slopes and floodplains downstream. Perhaps this mode of dispersion explains the plant's limited geographic distribution at elevations of about 960 to 1,000 feet within the Cannon River watershed and tributary areas. I made it to the waterfall! If you decide to check out Nurse Strand State Park for yourself, uh, if the parking lot is full when you get here, uh, go find somewhere else to hike. They've been having some trouble 
um, with overpopulation and not social distancing here at the park. Um, so if it's uh, full, go find another place to, uh, locally to explore. If parking is full at Nurstrand, I recommend you coming down the road just a few miles to Cairn Park. This is a county park for Rice County um, and has beautiful trails where you'll see waterfalls or at least some rapids, uh, trout lilies, and lots of flowers blooming here. If you decide to end up coming to Nurstrand, please follow all of their signage, like this one that says sensitive area, please stay on trail. Um, a lot of these populations are sensitive to being stepped on, so just follow their signs and staying on the trail. And they also have new signage for social distancing protocols, so follow that as well. Uh, the Hidden Falls Trail is now a one-way, so you have to walk through the campgrounds uh, to start your descent to find falls. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed exploring Nurse Duran Big Woods State Park with me today, and I hope you learned a little bit about one of Minnesota's rarest wildflowers. Um, if you weren't able to get out today, I hope this video brought a little joy um, and be safe, healthy, and have good trail manners when you're out and about.